Perfect. All right. So welcome. I am Kelly, the plant-based kitchenista. If you haven't met me before, um, hopefully we'll have we'll have lots of extra food left over, but that's okay because Jerry and I'll eat it for lunch tomorrow. But um, we so we are whole food, plant-based. So don't cook with any oil. So it's always vegetable broth, vegetable stock, um, water, or white wine, and those are only for like tomato sauces. So you'll see me using vegetable broth and um, like the water and stuff today. So if you don't have vegetable broth in your, you know, in your pantry and things or fridge, always feel free to substitute it with water. So we're going to be doing a coflar marbella, which is basically like a Spanish dish. So it's going to have, it's going to have like pitted prunes. It's going to have some olives in it and capers. So a little bit of savory, a little bit of kind of like that, all that umami that's going to be in your mouth, a little bit of sweet because um, we've got date paste and that type of thing. So really good, which will be over creamy mashed potatoes, which can't beat that if you've got anything with creamy mashed potatoes. And we'll have, I'm actually doing probably a little bit extra more, but um, just because we like mashed potatoes. And then I'm going to do a spinach and strawberry salad, which at this time, I think it's like 60 some degrees here. We had, you know, what, two feet of snow and stuff, two to three feet of snow last week. But now it's like 67 here. So can't beat a spinach and strawberry salad, especially with the strawberries starting to come in and being really good. So I'll have Jerry introduce himself really quick, and then we'll get started cooking because that's what we're all about. Welcome everyone, I'm Jerry Casados, if you don't know me, I'm a plant-based nutritionist and a certified instructor for Dr. John McDougall's Start Solution Program. I have a private practice, I do uh, consultations, and I have a couple programs to help people transition to a starch-based, uh, we call a starch-based diet, which is McDougall's uh, diet. And uh, we've been that plant-based 17 years this month. Oof. Yeah. Long time. <laughs> Long time. And I did it for health reasons, and Kelly joined me and helped support me. But uh, yeah, I was developing heart disease, arteries were getting clogged, and uh, went to see Dr. John McDougall in 2007 to uh, his 10-day living clinic and help me get off all my medications and uh, help, reverse, help reverse heart disease and off all meds and uh, doing well. So, so any questions about nutrition, I'd be glad to ask. But yeah, we are just help, want to help community understand what a plant-based diet and how it can heal the body, the whole body holistically. And it just doesn't reverse one thing, it can do many things. So just here to help and eat the food. And so sorry about the technical difficulties, but we'll try to get all that fixed. Okay, great. All right. So the first thing we want to do is get the cauliflower marbella done. So if you're following along, there's recipes are always connected. So if you're following along with it, so got a medium bowl. So we're actually going to combine the prunes. So you could leave, leave the, pin, the pitted prunes whole. I actually just did them in quarters because I'd rather like if I've got smaller, you know, like the, the um, florets and stuff with the cauliflower, I'd rather really have everything that's kind of mixed together versus big chunks of things. So like I said, I just chopped them up in fours. Pitted prunes, you can find anywhere in the stores, like all of your like Whole Foods and that, they'll give you the pitted prunes that are all ready to go. And they're really soft, sweet, very nice. So you're gonna get, that's gonna be where a little bit of the sweetness is gonna come from. And then we have a half a cup, and this is Castel of, Cast, Castel the Trano. And if I, had an, if I had an Italian accent, I would say it even better. Um, Cause we have a friend that's Italian and he says that it just sounds like it's beautiful. When I say it doesn't sound as beautiful. So these are actually like green olives. So these are pitted. They, can you guys that are on here, can you see me cooking? Yes. Okay. Looks like somebody has an issue. Okay. I would say go back out and come back in. Yeah, if you can't see the video, go back out really quick and just come back in and it should load it back. Sometimes it seems like Zoom's having some issues today or something. All right, so we got the olives. These are green olives, but they're not like the green olives that you have like the little pimento in the inside and they're really like harsh. They're more on the flavor of the, like the flavors out of like a black olive. So very mellow, um, very nice and stuff when you're putting them into like Spanish dishes or like Italian dishes. So I'm gonna add those in. If you don't want the, the whole chunks of the olives and stuff, you could definitely just do some slices if you wanted to. All right, so then we've got that. So we've got um, the olives, we've got the vegetable broth, which we're gonna add here in a second. I have red wine vinegar, so I have a quarter cup that we're gonna add in. That's gonna be the sauce. Do my vegetable broth. Add that in. 
And then what I'll do is like when I'm, when I'm actually got it in the oven and maybe it starts, if it looks like it's getting a little bit dry, then I'll just add some more vegetable broth or water, depending on what you've got. That way you've got a little bit of the sauce and stuff that you're going to be able to put with the, with the cauliflower and yeah. stuff on the mashed potatoes. All right. And then following so along, we've got capers. And so that clean. So capers are very briny. So um, you can, if you don't like things that are more like, say, like um, like vinegars and stuff, then you're probably not going like to like the capers. And I would say leave the capers out or maybe just put a few of them. So we actually said a tablespoon of capers. I would start with maybe just like a couple and see if you like them. And then if you do like them, then add some more. That's always a good thing with that. So I'm just going to add those in. And they're just, you know, they're, they, they look like, I kind of dump them in there, but, you know, they're just like little green bulbs, little tiny but definitely briny. All right, so we've got everything in there. All right, you've got the capers and then we've got the bay leaves. So we've got four bay leaves. Give the nice flavor of the bay leaves. Then we've got garlic. So we got five cloves of garlic, minced garlic. Looks good. Make sure I get all that out of there. That's gonna be a little bit more of your savory. All right, and then we've got oregano. So we've got a teaspoon of dry oregano. So depending on your oregano that you have, oregano can really overtake the dishes. But since we've got a whole head of cauliflower, I'm not worried about the teaspoon of oregano. But on other dishes, what I always recommend when you're when you're doing any type of um, any type of these recipes is always go low on your spices and then add in. So maybe when you kind of stir this up a little bit, you put a quarter of a teaspoon of oregano because if you're not a big fan of oregano, too much oregano can definitely overpower a dish. So Maybe it's just adding a little bit of oregano and then tasting it and then keep adding a little bit more. Because the worst, the last thing I want to do is have you put too much oregano in there and you don't like the teaspoon and then you end up throwing it out. That's not a good thing. Don't we, we don't want to do that. All right. We got red pepper flakes. You do not have to put the red paper, pepper flakes. It's just a pinch. But if you want to, just a pinch of those is good. You can add the sea salt and black pepper. I don't add any salt to any of the dishes. I always put salt on the table in case me wants a little bit of salt and stuff on things. Jerry doesn't like salt, so I don't want to ruin the dish where he won't eat it. So if I always want, I can always put salt on it afterwards. Black pepper, he's good with. So add some black pepper. And do a little bit of a mix. So it's just nice it just you know it's just like red wine and vegetable broth and it just has the olives so you're getting the briny the sweet all those flavors in there once we get this and we mix the call fire and what you're going to do now you normally would marinate it but we don't have 20 minutes on a cooking class to marinate it but normally if i was going to do it i would actually have done it yesterday and put it like in a plastic bag or a dish like this and then just kept marinating it because cauliflower is just like tofu or anything else that you make the more you marinate it the more that flavor takes but we don't have the 20 minutes so we're just going to Put the cauliflower in, and this is a medium head of cauliflower. So it gives you uh, gives you about probably if there's some big pieces, then just break them up. I would say it probably gives you about five six cups. So whoops, man overboard. You want to mix it up, and if you put it in a plastic bag like the day before. The nice thing about it is you can just take the plastic bag out of the refrigerator and shake it up, you know, side, you know, side to side and, and that type of thing. And then right away and stuff, just to put it back in there and then let it marinate some more. Oops. I'm going to do this really quick. I'm going to grab. And you can smell it. You can smell a little bit of that garlic and the, the, the red wine vinegar and all those different things. It smells good. And if you really like prunes, you could actually add a lot more. You could add more of the olives. You could always add some different vegetables if you want, but that is good. Hand real quick. And grab the one that tried to jump away on the floor. Okay, so we've got this. So we're gonna put the we're gonna put everything into a baking dish. If you don't have a baking dish, feel free to use like a baking sheet. 
You could do that. I would just line it with parchment paper or like silk pad or something like that. But we're just going to add this in. A little bit of scraping just so you have all the, because a lot of your garlic will try to stick to your bowl. So like I said, depending on how much liquid you see, because your cauliflower is going to soak up your liquid, liquid, one of the things that you can do is just add a little bit more cauliflower because you are going to put it into a 400 degree oven. I'll just add a little bit more. That way I have a little bit more sauce, which I like. So at the very end, we're actually going to add the date paste. So I have, um, I have a quarter, so basically a little over a quarter cup of date paste. You could use any sweetener you want. So if you don't want to have to, if you don't have date paste in a, Feel like a jar that's already made up and maybe you have agave or maple syrup you could use that too you could also do like monk fruit um, sweetener if you want to do that and then the last thing that we're going to add is a half a cup of white wine which you don't have to do you could also just substitute in more vegetable broth but the white wine's really nice because it gives a little bit of that savory so just add that in and i always when i'm doing the white wine now it's i used to buy just the boxes so the boxes of franzia and then you can just keep them on the shelf. Now they have them in cans, you know, almost like soda cans and stuff. So you can actually buy like a four pack and then just keep them on the shelf and then open them up as you need them. And then if you open it and don't use all of it, just put it into a mason jar and put it in the fridge. So just do a nice little stir because you want to make sure you get that, the sweetener, which is your date paste, all through it. And if you want to make it even easier, just add everything together in the bowl and then dump it into the the baking dish. Sometimes recipes make you do extra steps. Don't have to take them. All right. So this is going to go in the oven. So we're going to make sure that our cauliflower gets nice and soft. Um, you know what? You want it almost like an al dente, and you're going to have it where it's browning. So. We'll watch it and do its couple stirs here and there and just make sure everything's getting all nice and done. And if we need to, if we notice that the um, the liquid's getting a little bit dry or something, just add some more vegetable broth. That's all you need to do. Or water, either one. We'll get this in a 400 degree oven. No topping, no covering. You don't need to do that. It's almost like you're going to roast the, the cauliflower. All right. So mashed potatoes, easy to make, love to make, always have mashed potatoes around or baked potatoes or, you know, rosemary roasted potatoes, anything, especially starch solutions to potatoes are, you know, they're always your friend. So I actually just did like three to four. So I did the, the rest of potatoes that I got in the store and stuff were really small this time. Sometimes you get, you know, they'll be huge and they're great. These were really small. Um, usually I don't, I just scrub them down and I keep the peelings on them, but these, the peelings and stuff just seem really tough. Um, so what I did is I just, I just, you know, took the peelings off of them and then I just chopped them up into chunks. And so I've got them boiling in water because, it, you know, it takes a little bit and stuff for, you know, um, potatoes to cook. So I want to make sure that they're getting ready. So I probably truthfully did about when they were about this size and about probably about that big around, I probably did about seven or eight potatoes just because I, it kind of adds up to the three to four large potatoes, rust potatoes. Once we get those ready and they're, they'll be done here probably in about five, 10 minutes. Then we're gonna, we'll actually put them in the sink and we'll add some soy milk in there. And there's two things you can do. And there's two, like two camps on um, adding like any type of uh, milk product or non, you know, non-dairy milk product and stuff to mashed potatoes is you can heat your milk if you'd like. So if you wanna have your soy milk really hot, you can add that into the, the mashed potatoes. Some people say that it makes them creamier. I've tried it both ways. I'm just gonna add, it's basically almost like room temperature, but I'm just gonna add that into the mashed potatoes. I've tried it both the heated way and the the room temperature or even just cold out of the fridge. And I they it, to me, they taste the same. And, you know, it's got the chef background, the chef palate, but they taste the same and they're just as creamy. But I know some people believe on one thing or the other. You can add sea salt to them, but we won't do that and stuff. But then we'll add some black pepper and then we'll just we'll actually blend them up. So we just have a hand blender that will get those done. So those would be great. I'm going to do the oven up a little bit. Let me check my potatoes. So you'll see these are the these are the size chunks that I did. And the reason why I did them small like that instead of larger potatoes is that they cook faster, which is really nice. So let's just see. 
what they're like right now. Very close. So we can get the mashed potatoes going. Nothing better on this one. This will give you like four to six servings. And then, you know, it depends. You know, your servings are going to be this big. But let's just say that, you know, Hardy Eater and Starch Solutions, you know, they always talk about, you know, eating eating larger portions and stuff. You know, feel free to, you know, instead of doing like three to four large russet potatoes, do like six to eight. And then that way you have extra mashed potatoes that are in your fridge that you could, you know, do it with something else, add something else to it. Or, you know, when you have your car, your cauliflower marbella left over, you have extra mashed potatoes because truthfully, nothing better than mashed potatoes. And then you could also mm -hmm. add some of the chives, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It looks like Jerry has a question for me. So I'm using russet. So these are russet potatoes that, that are um, boiling right now, but you could use like the yellow potatoes, like the Idaho potatoes. You could use, um, I almost, I'll show you really quick. I almost did this. Go through these because they're cute. You know, so when you do like the petite gold and you can buy these like all in the grocery stores, I almost did these because they're easy to mash too. And yellow gold or any Idaho gold or what they call petite gold are really to me like when you're instead of russet potatoes, I love russet, but the yellow gold or petite gold and stuff are a lot sweeter. So if you're looking for something a lot sweeter, I would do the petite gold. But you could also, you know, completely change this up and do like red potatoes and, you know, and you could also do sweet potatoes like that. I would say like that. Um, what is it? Uh, Chef AJ calls them um, Hannah yams. And so they're like the white ones. And so you could do that, too, which gives you a completely different flavor profile. But these are the ones I'm doing today. Russet, just plain old russet. But like I said, sometimes in the stores, I don't know if you guys are seeing this, too, but sometimes in the stores, they're like you like the yellow um, or the Idaho potatoes and stuff will be great. And they're like large and they look great and you don't have any, you know, mold or any bad ones and stuff. And the russets won't look good or vice versa, you know. So it just kind of depends on, you know, what's coming into your state and what the grocery stores are carrying and stuff. And there's been some times I've gone and can't find a russet potato in the whole entire place. So I'm not sure what's going on with potatoes, but it all works. All right, so I want to get the dressing going for the spinach and strawberry salad. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. You can either take the recipe, so it has a cup of balsamic vinegar and then a quarter cup of agave, or you could use maple syrup, date paste, monk fruit sweetener, you know, whatever your favorite sweetener is. You could take this and you could put it in a blender and then you could add in flax seeds and then just let it sit for a little bit and it'll get really thick. That's one way to do this type of dressing. The one we're going to do today and just kind of giving you some different options, is we're actually going to put it in a pan. Let's make sure this is plugged in. We're going to put it in a pan, and we're going to heat it up, and we're going to let it reduce. So a cup of regular balsamic vinegar. If you wanted to even change this up even more, you could add in all kinds of different flavors of balsamic vinegars. Let me just move this over because we'll bring in the potatoes over here in a second. But you could do... I was thinking about, you know, you could do like apple, so like an apple vinegar, or you could do um, a sesame vinegar or any of those type of different flavors. Mix in your agave, your date paste, your sweetener, and then heat it up or put in like your um, flax seeds and just and just put it in the blender and make it thick. But that's another way and stuff to change the salad up. So let's just say you have the spinach and strawberry salad and you've got the, the balsamic vinegar and then you're going to a party or, you know, there's all kinds of like cookouts and things that are going to happen here soon. And you're like, I would like to do sesame. And then you add some sesame seeds. That's just changes the whole flavor profile of the salad. So think about when you do things like a salad like this, the different flavors that you can add. You can do an orange and add some of the orange, you know, pieces into it, all those kind of things. So just fun to have, you know, and have all kinds of different dressings. So like I said, we're gonna actually reduce this one. So we're gonna we're gonna put it and watch it on low and let it boil so it'll thicken up. So it'll from almost be like a really thick reduced balsamic, but sweeter. All right. So spin. And we'll just keep the spoon right in the right in the um the saute pan just that way, just that way we can say, you know, we'll just keep stirring it and watching it. Because one thing is is one of the things when you're doing balsamic like this, it'll burn off really quick if you're not watching it. And then you'll have it you'll have it like burnt to your pans and it's very, very difficult to get off your pans. Otherwise, like steel wool is about the only way to do it. And the smell will make your eyes water. It's one of those. So just watch it when you're doing that. 
and do this. You could also, if it doesn't get thick when you're when you're reducing it, let's just say it's not to the thickness that you want, then you could always just um, add a little bit of flaxseed, so brown flax seeds in it also, and that it'll it'll actually thicken up really well. The ground flax seeds, or even like a chia seed, that's that type of thing, will thicken your dressing really quickly. So we have spinach. So we have baby spinach. Some of it to me doesn't look like it's baby, but they call it baby spinach. So let me grab the, the bowl that we're going to put everything in. And I can already see it heating up. If you don't want bigger bites of spinach like that, feel free to just do a quick, you know, rough chop with it. But we're just going to, the bigger pieces will actually be at the bottom. And then I've got some of the really small pieces on the top. This is a beautiful salad. And when you're doing something that's, you know, more for the springtime, or even if you're looking for that freshness in the winter, this is a great salad to have. Okay, question? <laughs> Yes, will be. It's going to be a little bit different. Let me find. I think I have one. I used to. Just like my balsamic, but here's a great example. So, like, there's the Napa Valley balsamic vinegar. So it's still going to be this one here is going to be a little bit tartar because it's it's pretty much just balsamic vinegar, like really slowly reduced. So you are going to still have that that. Um, that umami kind of that that vinegar type of flavor and so it's going to be a little bit sweeter than your regular balsamic that's just a just a plain liquid but it's not going to be as sweet as this one because this one has a little bit of sweetener in it so it's going to give you the same type of like consistency but a little bit sweeter which will be great with having like with the um what else is this one it's great with having like the the fruit and, and all those kind of things with it but this one's a really good one it's napa valley naturals balsamic vinegar Grand reserve 25 stars and you'll like when I turn it it's actually really thick <clears throat> you have to be careful over this because the, the the vinegar will make you cough but this one's a really good one it's probably about 9.99 I think for the entire jar but you can use it for a long mm -hmm. time but you can get like the little um like plastic bottles that are like a, a reduced balsamic that you can you know, like sprinkle onto things or you can do it onto um I don't know, all kinds of different like recipes. And that was really good too. Lisa has a question. Later in the spring, could you please do some power bowl? Need some what? Oh, power bowl? Yes, we can. We sure can. I love power bowls. Those are my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> I am real big on, I like anything that I can dip. I think that's from kid childhood of being able to, you know, to dip things into sauces and stuff and power bowls because power bowls are so fun. And then they, when you do like, if you do like a little bit of meal prep ahead of time, then you could make like so many different flavors of that. So yes, we will do, um, I think I have the April class already figured out, but let's do, let's do May. I'll put power bowls on and we'll do like three or four different like power bowls and show you how to mix them all up and, and different sauces we can put on. Love it. Thank you for that idea. All right. So we don't need the flax seed. Here it is. Get this out of the way. Check our potatoes, look good. Stir. So I have blueberries, fresh blueberries. You could also do frozen, just make sure, you know, just rinse them out or just let them sit in your fridge until they unthaw. I have strawberries. So the strawberries, you could actually, you know, you could leave them like, you could do them in quarters, you could slice them, you could do, you know, whatever you're looking for. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna cut the tops off here real quick. Strawberries are just at the point right now where they're starting to get sweet. Not all of your strawberries when you when you buy like a pack of them are going to be sweet. The reason why I didn't pull the, the cut the tops off is because when you do that and you've got it in the fridge, it actually they start breaking down really quick. So I want to make sure that we weren't having issues with things breaking down. If you have a little bit of green on the bottom, just do a quick slice. Because that's definitely not going to be sweet. 
Say what? It's healthy. Jerry, Jerry says it's healthy. Yeah, but it's like sour. Whoops. A little bit of green. Okay. Of course, these are just washed, and that's what I did. So I think I'm trying to decide if I want slices. All right, what's the vote? Slices or quarters? What do we think? I'm okay either way. What do you say, Jer? Slices? Okay. I'm just doing them in nice slices. My little dog's down here. She's usually not in the kitchen. She doesn't like it when I cook. Like doing a show or something. I don't know why, but she's in here right now, which is unusual. Usually about three slices, maybe depends on the size that you have per strawberry. A little bit of the green in. It smells so good. Nothing better, I think, than when the when the spring and the summer hits and you've got all these fresh, you know, fruits and vegetables and everything like that. So sliced strawberries. I also did um, pecans. You could do any type of nut that you would like. Um, pecans is, is actually a really good one when you're doing fruit, just because it's a very sweet type of a nut, but you could do walnuts. I just put them in, I just put them in the oven, 350, toasted them for about five to eight minutes. So they have a really nice like flavor. So like some of the oils come out. And then, so what I do is I, I left them all whole. There's some of them I'll break up in here and then I'll add the whole ones. So I think we'll do strawberries first. It's a nice thing about this salad. It's wonderful. People love it. And it's simple. You could also, if you're like, when it comes time and the, the grapes are good, depending on, you know, depending on the areas and stuff, you could actually add grapes to it too. So you could do like red grapes, green grapes, you know, any of, the, any of your favorite ones. You could kind of mix it up and do all of them if you wanted to. And grapes, strawberries, and blueberries, really good. Lots of strawberries. Blueberries, fresh blueberries. And then, on. so I'm just gonna crunch some of them up. I remember when, when my mom, when we used to do like all the, the um, Christmas cookies, this was my job, is to set after she had toasted all the, the different nuts for all the different recipes, is to set and basically take them apart by hand like this. I was always like, can I just use like a, a mallet or something like that? And she's like, no, if I like them broken up where they look like they're by hand versus all crunched up. So this takes me back to my childhood. My mom was a great, a great baker. She was a, a really good cook too, you know, Midwest cook until she hit about 40 and then said, I'm done. <laughs> and then didn't pretty much after that, didn't cook at all. Crunch those up. Broken ones. Add in some of the whole ones. And if you have anybody at home when you're actually toasting up the, the pecans, it's hard to, it was around here, it was hard to keep Jerry out of the pecans. So I kept finding ones missing. Yeah, 
couple more, only two or three more left. So there's an idea. So you can see that it's, you have to wipe the ball me. You can see where it's starting to get thick. Once it gets to a certain point where it starts getting thick like this, just let it go just a couple minutes more, really watch it because it will burn. And then what you're gonna do wanna do is you're gonna wanna pull it off, almost like you're making like a candy or something. Like when you remember when you used to do the K-Row syrup type candies, you're gonna pull it off and then you're gonna let it cool down and it's gonna thicken even more. Very strong. The balsamic, once it gets hot, it gets very strong. And will actually go like in your nostrils and make you cough. But nothing better than homemade balsamic, like a thick balsamic. So this is out of cooling, but you can tell big difference between what it was a few minutes ago and now. So I have a jar. So way to cool a little bit faster. What I highly recommend too is after you've done this, make sure you get water into the pan. That way it's not as hard. You don't have to get the old steel wool out to clean your pans. It'll come right off. Okay. So taste-wise, that's really good. It's like I said, it's it's just like a reduced balsamic that you can buy in the stores, except it's a little bit sweeter. So if you just do, you know, just do regular balsamic vinegar, you're going to get that that really like that tartness and stuff. And if you really want the tartness, then leave any of the sweeteners out. But with the salad and stuff that you have a lot of fruit and stuff, it's nice to add a little bit of tartness, but a little bit of sweetness too. And it just melds really well with all the sweetness that's in here. So still going to leave it off to the side because it needs to cool a little bit more. Otherwise, we're going to have a hot salad, which is not really what we're looking for. But you could do something like that, too, because there is, you know, there's all kinds of salads where they do like a spinach salad. They used to do like a bacon dressing, but you could do like the hot balsamic dressing and then add your fruit and things after it's done and then have almost the same look and feel just without the bacon. So there is the spinach and strawberry salad. Isn't that pretty? Put that on a table or you go out to like a picnic or something like that, I guarantee you, this will be eaten. So we're going to hold it off to the side right now and then we'll drizzle it with some balsamic here in just a few minutes. Let's get our mashed potatoes going. Get this out of here. I'm going to need the sink. Check my cauliflower. Time to do a quick stir on the cauliflower. Oh, it smells good. It's, it smells like oregano and kind of olives and red wine vinegar. Smells really good. All right, so that off the side. So I just put it just like I use like a spaghetti. So it's my spaghetti pot, but I like it because it drains. So it's a really nice, easy way and stuff to get your potatoes going. A little bit of a steam bath there. Get all the potatoes out. Right. What's this? Bring that around here. That side. So here's what my potatoes look like. So one thing I don't know if you guys know. So if you don't have 
let's just say you get you get ready get ready to get into the refrigerator and you pull out your non dairy milk. So whether it's almond milk, you know, hemp milk, um, soy milk, whatever. I'm using soy because we're just used to just soy. But you're getting in there and you got you pull up the carton and stuff, and somebody is uh, in the house and stuff is like pretty much drank all of it, and you've got maybe a teaspoon left. You could also, and I'm sure that never happens ever, right? No. Happens in our house a lot. Right, Jer? No. You could actually use vegetable stock or vegetable broth. So that's another way and stuff that you could actually, if you if you don't have any non-dairy um, non milk and there's not anything on the shelf or anything, feel free to use the vegetable stock or broth and stuff, and then you could actually make your mashed potatoes that way. So if you have it, it's always a good thing. Okay, so I pulled off. Here's the soy milk. What are you doing in the kitchen? I think she thinks it's dinner time, so she's in here hoping to get a treat. Okay, watch out, kid. I don't want to step on you. All right, so hand blender always work well. So I'm going to add. I'm going to pour. So we've got. So we said. Um, we said what. Uh, half a cup. This is probably over a half a cup. I think I poured actually a cup in there. Just, you know, playing with it just to see how much I need. So I'll just put about that much in, about half a cup. I will do black pepper, not the salt, but this is where you would add the sea salt. If you wanted to change the flavor profile a little bit more, you could actually add um, garlic powder. And when you add garlic powder in there, it makes it like a garlic mashed potatoes. So let's just say you get done with this and you're like, okay, I've got the cauliflower marbella. And then the next day you would like to have some garlic mashed potatoes with maybe like, I don't know, some roasted asparagus or something like that. Just add a little bit of um, of uh, um, garlic powder in there and stuff. And then all of a sudden you have these garlic mashed potatoes, which are fabulous. Okay, so get in there. Go by when you're as far as how much how much of the non-dairy milk that you're adding. Go by the consistency that you're looking for. So with like a half a cup into, but I also did like I said I doubled the potatoes. Um, they're right now pretty thick. If you like really thick mashed potatoes and you like you know, like chunk cinnamon things, then this is probably this is probably a good place of where you want to do that. I like them really creamy, especially since the cauliflower marbella is going to be on there. Then I'm going to add a little bit more of the plant-based milk. That's where I like them. I like them where they're all nice and creamy. And that's a really good one. Yum. Nothing better than mashed potatoes. You put the lid on it, pull the lid. That keeps them warm. Pop those out. Good. All right. Still warm. I'm gonna put it in the fridge really quick. Just put it in the freezer. Get it going. That way we can have it ready when we're ready to use it. There's some that's stuck to my knife, but you can tell it like when it cools down, it really thickens up. Tastes good. Oh well. All right, I will add that back in. We want to get chives ready. So when you do a, a normal recipe of cauliflower marbella, usually the, the topping is usually parsley. I'm not a big fan of parsley. I just, if it's like mixed in things and stuff, still not a big fan. Um, it's just, for some reason, just not one of my favorites. I love basil, everything else. So chives, I love. And so I went and bought chives instead. And it's also very pretty. You could also put chives on your um, spinach and strawberry salad if you wanted to do that. But the nice thing about it is if you use, you know, if you have a little container, one of the things that you can do is like if you, you know, you make it earlier in the week and then you have some left over. And well, I, I'll put this in a quick tip. How to get how to keep your chives in your refrigerator, especially if they're in these little packets without going bad. 
So I bought these. I bought these on Saturday. So Saturday afternoon, I took one of these, you know, these white cotton towels, you know, these tea towels as they call them. And I actually wrapped it around this box because I knew I was going to be gone earlier in this week. So I just got back yesterday from Baltimore. But I, so what I did is I wrapped it up and I put it in the refrigerator, which is not used a lot. And so it was like, it was kept it dark. And so all the light and things like that didn't get into it. But look at that. It's still just as fresh as when I bought it on Saturday and today's Thursday. So if you get to where you're, you know, you've got, and you got some leftover, I'll wrap them back up into a white towel and I'll put them back in the fridge. But it comes to the weekend, you know, make a soup and put your chives in there or make something, you know, maybe like a, a hash or, um, you know, tofu scramble or something like that and use your chives. They're, they're just good for those type of things. All right, so you've got them. So just do slight little chops. I actually was like, no, I don't want to buy chives. And so in our last house, what I did is I said, I'm just going to grow my own chives. Not recommended. Not recommended unless you have a very controlled environment or a really big yard and you don't care um, because they are pretty. They are they have big, huge, like purple um, like bulbs on them and stuff. Sometimes they're really little and then sometimes they're really big. But the minute that they dry up, they populate. They basically, the seeds get blown everywhere. And then all of a sudden you'll have chives everywhere. So if you really like chives, good idea. If it's if not, make sure if you if you want to just have a few, very controlled environments. So maybe like inside and you're growing it at like a herb garden or something like that. That's what I would recommend. Because I had hundreds. Okay. All flower. Let's look at it really quick. Take my spoon. Smells really good. Here's what it's looking like so far. So you see that the cauliflower is starting to get browned. You still have quite a bit of sauce in the bottom, which is exactly what you need because you want the, the sauce to thicken up a little bit, but it's great over the mashed potatoes. It's almost like having a gravy type thing. So I'm gonna give it a quick stir. And I'm gonna taste one to see if we're at the al dente stage. Few more minutes. All right, with the chives, let me grab the dressing out. I want it to freeze. As you can see, it's still warm, but how thick it is. So it does take a little while. So if you're getting ready to do it and you're getting ready to do it for dinner, I'd recommend doing it earlier or maybe the day before and stuff so that your your uh, balsamic and stuff's not really hot. Right now it's it's still, I would say, probably lukewarm, but like there, there we go. Really thick. That's good. It would almost make a really good glue. That's what it starts getting so thick. The next day, the next day, if it gets too thick and you want to use it again on the salad because you have leftover salad, then what I would do is maybe add just a little bit of water and put it in your microwave to heat it up or just add a little bit of water and stir it and then just let it sit on the counter for a little bit and then it'll start loosening up again. Good way to cool it off and keep it moving. But if you don't want to go, like I, this is all about making things easy, doing things for fun. You don't want to have to sit here and, and wait and, and get the, the balsamic to reduce. Just buy the balsamic reduced that you can get in that little containers. They're like, what, three or four or five dollars. And you can use it a lot. I use it on, we use it on um, bruschetta. So, you know, you're always drizzling on bruschetta, you know, with avocado and all those kind of things. So you'll use it. If you grab one and you grab one at the store, you will use it a lot. Let it cool off a little bit. 
But other things, if you're not a fan of cauliflower, you know, you could do this, you could do this recipe with, um, I would say you could probably do like an eggplant, but I know a lot of people are like, mm, I'm not so big on eggplant. So it, it depends on if you like eggplant or not. Um, it was interesting when I was at a, I was at a, a headquarters and stuff for one of the companies and stuff that at my work from work and stuff, they had huge plates on the, the, uh, the buffet, huge plates of, of, um, eggplant that was in like little chunks and stuff. And it looked like it'd been kind of probably maybe sauteed a little bit. And then it had kind of like a, I think almost like a, I didn't try it, but like a ranch dressing type on there. So it was some kind of a probably sour cream, maybe some, you know, some different things on it. And they, but I would say 95% of it remained on the plate and people didn't. And there was 120 people there. And a lot of people and stuff just are not big fans of eggplant. Cauliflower is probably one of my favorites. You could also do this with tofu. So all kinds of different choices that we can do. But cauliflower would be my favorite. I'll be able to drizzle here. Couple minutes. It smells really good. It almost smells, it's a span, like I said, Marbella is um, a Spanish type of a dish, but it, it almost smells a little bit Italian because it has that oregano in there. So you're getting a little bit of those flavors of oregano. If you don't like oregano, always add, you could add in basil. You could add in some other flavors um, that you wanted to do and, and or even some Mediterranean spices, which are really nice. So change it up a little bit, make it your own. And if you've got pictures, we'd love to see the, the photos. That's always a fun thing. Okay, we've got the plate. So let's back up. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do, of course, is mashed potatoes. So another way that you could do this dish, which was, is really pretty, is you could take some of the, the spinach that you have left over. Let's just say you bought a big box of spinach and you've got leftover spinach, saute it up. Add some a little bit of vegetable broth or water, saute it up in a pan, add your spinach here on the bottom as a sauteed spinach, then put your mashed potatoes. So make sure you know you get the moisture out of the spinach. And then you've got like mashed potatoes and then put your cauliflower marbella on it. And I guarantee you, and then a little bit of the, like either parsley or chives or, you know, basil, whatever you want to do, and then have it serve it like that, almost like a little bit of a stack dish. Beautiful. Would be really, really pretty. That's a way to, a really fun way to do it. I could actually saute up, but I don't have my pan up here. All right, let's. And you could keep cooking this as long as you want. So if you really want it to get like really, really soft, then feel free to keep cooking it as long as you want. So grab the bay leaves out. You don't need those anymore. It'll be just like a soup. You gotta sometimes hunt for them. A little piece. We had four. There it is. Really, really hot. Okay, let's taste one. Nice. It has, you know, because you have your red wine vinegar in there, it has a little bit of the, the kind of the vinegar, but then it also has a little bit of the capers, but it also has the sweetness from your your date paste, your, you know, your um, pitted prunes and, and all those kind of things. So nice flavors. Nice, really good flavors. And then there's quite a bit of sauce left over just because they kept adding just a little bit more vegetable broth, just because I like that. But if you wanted to, you know, it's 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 not a real thick sauce. So if you wanted to make it like really thick, almost like a gravy, you could pull your cauliflower and everything else out. And then with the the, the vegetable broth at the bottom, you could add um, a little bit of, of uh, like a tapioca flour, cornstarch is non-GMO, that in there and give it a quick stir and then make it even really thick. And so you could do that too. And then you could drizzle it over the top. All right, so grab some spoons. All right, got the mashed potatoes ready to go.
and you could do this really fun. You could, you know, you can put this in like, um, like different bowls. So you could have like round, you like how they do with the rice or square, all kinds of really fun ways to do this. One of my big strengths. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Make it a little bit easier trying to get. All right. So grab the cauliflower. Sorry for the dog barking. She's hearing other dogs. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some olives there. Grab the sauce. Some more olives. This is for picture taking. This doesn't mean you have to do this at home. This is just when I get ready to do a picture, just making sure that everything looks really pretty. Chives. A little bit of black pepper. Get your things all together. All right. So let me move this out of the way. The nice thing about this dish, other than the mashed potatoes, almost like a one pot meal. So if you have the mashed potatoes already made up, you've got pretty much a one pot meal. I guess you'll get the... All right, so salad. It gets really thick really quick. I'm going to try since I have some left over. There we go. Okay. So here is dinner. This is the cauliflower marbella. So as you can see, it has it has the pitted prunes, it has the it has the olives in it, it has you know red wine vinegar, cauliflower, has a little bit of red pepper flakes, so you get a little bit of the kind of the bite, golf, you know, has garlic, bay leaves, all kinds of great things in them. But like I said, nothing better over mashed potatoes. And you can see the sauce is thickened up just a little bit too. But you know, it's it's going to be good to have, you know, to dip the, the mashed potatoes in it. So it's going to give your mashed potatoes a really good flavor. And so you've got, you know, if you're thinking about like starch solutions, you've got, you know, your vegetables and everything else. You've got your potatoes, great starches. So you've got everything on one plate and it looks absolutely beautiful. Then. Yes. You have the spinach and strawberry salad with a reduced balsamic dressing. So a little more savory type of a dish for dinner, but then you also got the salad that's gonna be a little bit more sweet, but a little bit of savory also. And then you got dinner. This is like, to me is it's beautiful. It's, it's all about, I always call it eye candy. So when you look at things and stuff to be able to see things that are beautiful and the more that you make things that are pretty and stuff, the more people are gonna wanna eat them. But I guarantee you, you take this, if you make like a, like even a brown bowl and you take this salad somewhere with a dressing, you won't come home with any of it. People will be eating the, the blueberries off of there and doing all kinds of things for many, many hours. So there we go. Um, I will, thank you, Daisy. I will def definitely do power bowls. I will get that put together and get the May recipes out there. And um, we'll have some fun with that because power bowls, I, like I said, I like anything in bowls, anything that you can put together and you can make and it just, you know, adding all your favorite ingredients is good with me. So I hope you guys enjoyed. So we are going to have dinner tonight with cauliflower marbella, which is, like I said, a Spanish dish. And then we're going to have a spinach and strawberry salad with a reduced balsamic dressing. I hope you guys enjoyed. 
we will see you here. I think it's actually next week because I had because of traveling back to back. So we will see you next week for potato cakes and a bunch of other things with that. So hopefully no issues. Keep your fingers crossed. No issues with Zoom. But other than that, we'll see you next week. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.